you know, if you've never been here to the Israel of God, we always deal with the Bible by subject and title. So today's title is The Everlasting Covenant. Because God is a covenant God. He make covenants with people. And I'm going to tell you, once you get baptized in the name of Jesus, you have just come up under covenant. And you had see God make covenants with people. He made a covenant with Noah. When you see that rainbow out there, that's the covenant that the Lord made with Noah that he would never ever flood the earth again by water. He turned around and made two covenants with Abraham. He made the covenant of circumcision. And when he made the covenant with circumcision with Abraham, Abraham took his seed. The strangers in his house, and he circumcised all of them that same day. Amen. Now, for the people who think that you don't have to be circumcised no more, then you telling me God break covenants because Abraham kept the covenant. Amen. He made another covenant with Abraham that he is going to give him the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession. That covenant's still in suspension today. And also, he made a covenant with who? Moses and Israel. And look, we're going to take a look at what did he tell Israel to do to be a part of the covenant. Let's start this in Exodus, the 19th chapter. Let's find out what he going to tell Israel to do. Uh oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. I think we better read the law first. <laughs> no, I got you, brother. I got you. I got you. Let's go to Exodus, the 20th <laughs> chapter, everybody. Exodus 20, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Amen. We got to read the law first. If I don't yeah. read the law, I better move down here. <laughs> Exodus 20, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead and read. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For the Lord thy God am a jealous God. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. And showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Go ahead. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it... Thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Let's go to Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter. Ecclesiastes 12, verses 13 and 14. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Go ahead. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Let's go to Revelation, the 22nd chapter. Let's go to Revelation 22. We're going to pick it up at verse uh, 14. 14. Go ahead and read. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have a right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. 
For without our dogs, sorcerers, whoremongers, and murderers, and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. Oh, if we did them things, this world would be a utopia. Amen. It would be a utopia. And this is the covenant right here that we are under, people. We under this covenant right here. Let's go to Exodus, the 19th chapter, and let's see what the Lord go have Moses to tell the children of Israel if they want to be a part of this covenant, what they need to be doing. Exodus 19, and we go pick it up at verse 1. This is when the children of Israel had just came out of Egypt, and they around Mount Sinai. Exodus 19, and let's pick it up at verse 1. Let's see what Moses go tell these children to do if they want to be a part of the covenant. Amen. Go ahead and read. In the third month, when the children of Israel were gone forth out of the land of Egypt, the same day came they into the wilderness of Sinai. Go ahead. For they were departed from Rephidim and were come to the desert of Sinai and had pitched in the wilderness and their Israel camped before the mountain. You got the whole nation is camped before Mount Sinai right here. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. And Moses went up unto God, and the Lord called unto him out of the mountain, saying, Thus shall thou say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel. This is what I want you to tell the children of Israel, Moses. Go ahead and read. Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians. Tell them you have seen what I did to the Egyptians. Go ahead. And how I bear you on eagles' wings and brought you into myself. Go ahead. Now therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all, for all the earth is mine. He said, now therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed, and keep my covenant, he said, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people. He said, because all the earth is mine. But how you have to do this, you have to obey his voice, and you have to keep the covenant. There we go. Now, you can be a peculiar treasure unto me, but you have to obey my voice and keep my covenant. Now you could be a peculiar treasure unto me. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests. All Israel, women and men, we supposed to be the priests. Amen. A kingdom of priests. Go ahead and read. And a holy nation. Go ahead. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. Go ahead. And Moses came and called for the elders of the people. So what Moses do, Moses came back there and said, hey, elders, I need to talk to y'all. Let me tell you what the Lord just told me to tell you. Go ahead and read. And lay before their faces all these words which the Lord commanded him. And all the people answered together and said, all that the Lord has spoken, we will do. Whenever you get married, you know what you say? I do. <laughs> this is a marriage here, right here, Amen. people. This is a marriage. And the people say, all that the Lord have said, we will do. Amen. Go ahead and read. And Moses returned the words of the people unto the Lord. So Moses did what? He turned around and went back to the Lord and said, Lord, they said, all that you done said, we will do. Amen. But you know, sometimes you got to rehearse this thing more than one time in Israel. Right. We will say, I do, but we really don't mean I do. Right. So sometimes what you need to do, you need to rehearse the thing over again to Israel. Let's go to Exodus uh, 24. Let's go to Exodus 24. And we go pick it up at verse 1. Because that's a marriage, people. Because what do the Lord do? He marries his church and bring them up under covenant. Amen. And this is the covenant and the old covenant right here. Exodus 24, and let's pick it up at verse 1. Let's just take a peek at how the old covenant went. Amen. Go ahead and read. And he said unto Moses, Come up unto the Lord, thou and Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and 70 of the elders of Israel, and worship ye afar off. He said, hey, bring up 74 of the elders of Israel, but y'all worship afar off. Go ahead and read. And Moses alone shall come near the Lord. 
But they shall not come nigh, neither shall the people go up with him. Go ahead. And Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord. And all the judgments and all the people answered with one voice and said, all the words which the Lord has said, will we do? Uh-oh, there they go again. I do. Every time somebody get married, you know what they say? I do. I do. <laughs> Here go the marriage again. And what did Moses do at verse 3? And Moses came and told the people, all the words of the Lord and all the judgments and the people answered, I do. Amen. So he taught the people what they needed to do. I wonder why we can't do that in the church today. <laughs> why we can't teach the people what they need to do. For you can know exactly what to do. Amen. What the people say, all the words which the Lord have said, we will do. Go ahead and read. And Moses wrote all the words of the Lord and rose up early in the morning and built an altar unto the hill and 12 pillars according to the 12 tribes of Israel. Go ahead. And he sent young men of the children of Israel, which offered burnt offerings and sacrificed peace offerings of oxen unto the Lord. So now they finna do some sacrifices here because we got a marriage and we have to, every covenant got to be ratified by blood. Amen. So what they do, they went and got the animals, and they bringing them to the priest. Let's see what they going to do. Go ahead and read. And Moses took half of the blood, and he put it in basins. Go ahead. And half of the blood he sprinkled on the altar. He said half of the blood he sprinkled all on the altar. Go ahead and read. And he took the book of the covenant. He took the book of what? The covenant. Go ahead. And read in the audience of the people. What he doing reading in the audience of the people? Hey, he letting the people know exactly what the covenant is. What Moses do, he read in the audience of the people. Go ahead and read. And they said, all that the Lord has said will we do and be obedient. That go the third time that the people say, I do. And I'm going to be obedient. That's when you get baptized, you coming up under this covenant. And you saw, you know what you're saying? All that the Lord have said, I'm going to do. Because you come up under marriage when you get baptized. And this exactly what you're saying right here. All that the Lord have said, I'm going to do, and I'm going to be obedient. Amen. Then you get baptized and you come up under marriage. Go ahead and read. Read and verse, uh, verse 7 again. Go ahead. And he took the book of the covenant. And read in the audience of the people, and they said, all that the Lord has said will we do and be obedient. Go ahead. And Moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people. Hey, Moses took the blood and did what? Start sprinkling the blood all over the people and everything. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. And said, behold, the blood of the covenant which the Lord has made with you concerning all these words. Uh oh, nah, this covenant is extant in stone now. Nah. Mm -hmm. He said, the blood of the covenant, which the Lord have made with you concerning all these words. They agreed to do it. And the Lord took the sacrifices of the blood and sprinkled on the people. This marriage is etched in stone now. Amen. Now, we need to find out how did the Lord catch these people when he made this covenant? How did these people look when the Lord made the covenant with them? Let's go to Ezekiel, the 16th chapter. Let's see how the people look when the Lord made this covenant with them. Let's go to Ezekiel 16. When the Lord introduced himself to the people, let's see what condition they was in. <laughs> Ezekiel 16, and we go pick it up at verse 1. Ezekiel 16. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Let's see what kind of condition this people was in when the Lord made this covenant with them. Verse 16 and 1. Go ahead and read. Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, calls Jerusalem to know her abomination. Go ahead. And say, Thus say the Lord God unto Jerusalem, Thy birth and thy nativity is in the land of Canaan. Thy father was an Amorite, 
and thy mother a Hittite. I know one thing, this is who the Lord gave the land of Canaan to Israel. That's why he said your nativity and your birth is of the land of Canaan. And I know the Amorites and the Hittites is Canaan's children. Go ahead and read. And as for thy nativity, in the day that thou was born, thy navel was not cut. He said in the day you was born, Israel, your navel wasn't even cut. Every time a sister have a baby, somebody cut the navel cord, don't they? He said, well, when, when I met you, Israel, your navel wasn't even cut. Mm. Go ahead and read. Neither was thou washed in water to supple thee. And you wasn't even washed in water. You must have been a bloody mess when the Lord met you. Amen. You wasn't even washed in water. Go ahead. Thou was not salted at all, nor swaddled at all. Go ahead. None I pity thee. They did no I pity you when you was born, Israel. And no, I pity you even until this day. He said, none I pity thee. Go ahead. To do any of these unto thee. Hey, don't wash you. Don't cut the navel cord. Hey, didn't nobody do this to you, Israel. Go ahead. To have compassion upon thee. But thou was cast out into the open field. To the loathing of thy person in the day that, that thou was born. Go ahead. And when I pass by thee. And the Lord said, when I pass by you, I'm looking at you, you're a bloody mess. He said, when I pass by thee, go ahead. And saw thee polluted in thine own blood. Hey, when he saw you, you was polluted in your own blood because didn't nobody wash you. So what was you? You was polluted in your own blood. Go ahead. I said unto thee, when thou was, when thou was in thy blood, live. Yea, I said unto thee, when thou was in thy blood, live. Go ahead. I have caused thee to multiply as the bud of the field. Yeah, this is the Lord's talking. He said, I have caused thee to multiply as the bud of the field. It was the Lord that caused us to multiply. Amen. Go ahead and read. And thou hast increased in wax and great, and thou hast come to excellent ornaments. Thy breasts are fashioned. And thine hair is grown, whereas thou was naked and bare. Hey, you see what the Lord has did for us as a nation? But when he found us, we was what? Naked and bare. Go ahead and read. Now when I pass by thee. He said, when I pass by you, go ahead. And look upon thee. Behold, thy time was the time of love. He said, when I pass thee and I looked upon you, Israel, your time was what? Your time was the time of love. Go ahead and read. And I spread my skirt over thee. Hey, every time a husband say, take a wife, what you do? You spread your skirt over your wife. Go ahead and read. And cover thy nakedness. What you do to your wife, you cover her nakedness. This is what the Lord did for us as a people. Amen. Go ahead and read. Yea, I swear unto thee. And entered into a covenant with thee. Uh-oh, he said he entered into a what? A covenant with thee. We seen him enter into the covenant with us. Verse 8 again. That sounds so good, I need to hear it again. <laughs> Verse now, 8, go ahead and read. Now when I, when I passed by thee and looked upon thee, behold, thy time was the time of love. And I spread my skirt over thee. And covered thy nakedness. Yea, I swear unto thee, and entered into a covenant with thee, saith the Lord God, and thou became his man. Uh-oh. All of a sudden, when the Lord, and we said, I do, didn't we? Hey, that's a marriage, people. And what did the Lord start doing? He started covering our nakedness. He spread a skirt over us. And you know what? We became his. Go ahead and read. Then I washed, then washed I thee with water. He said, I'm the one that washed you with water. Go ahead. Yea, I thoroughly washed away thy blood from thee. He said, I'm the one, I thoroughly, I washed away the blood from thee. Go ahead. And I anointed thee with oil. You know, we got to be anointed with oil, boy. You take a shower and you don't oil yourself up, boy, you be a... Go ahead, go ahead and read. I clothed thee also with broidered work, and shod thee with badger skin, 
And I girded thee about with fine linen, and I covered thee with silk. You see what the Lord started doing for us? This is the Lord that started covering our nakedness. He said he entered into a covenant with thee. Let's see what the covenant is that he entered in with us. Let's go to Exodus 31. Let's go to, I mean, Exodus 34. Exodus 34. Let's look at the covenant that he entered in with us. Exodus 34, and we go pick it up at verse uh, 27. Exodus 34. Let's look at this covenant that he entered in with us. And we said all that the Lord have said we will do and going to be obedient. That's why right. whenever somebody get baptized, they need to know you are under covenant now, people. You just married the Lord. Mm. And that's a serious covenant right there. Amen. 34, and let's pick it up at verse 27. 34 and 27, let's look at the covenant he entered in with us. Go ahead and read. And the Lord said unto Moses, Write thou these words, for after the ten of these words have I made a covenant with thee and with Israel. Uh-oh, he said after the ten of these words, Moses, I have made a covenant with thee and with Israel. Go ahead and read. And he was there with the Lord forty days and forty nights. He did neither eat bread nor drink water. And he wrote upon the tables of the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. Uh-oh, what's the words of the covenant? The Ten Commandments. Hey, that's when we said all that the Lord have said we will do and be obedient. And you know what the average person don't understand about the Ten Commandments? The Ten Commandments, the whole Bible is built upon the Ten Commandments. Amen. The first five commandments, he's teaching you how to love your God. With all. They asked Jesus, what is the great commandment in the law? Jesus turned around and said, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, and might. Amen. He said, and the second is like it to it, love thy neighbor as thyself. Amen. He said, on these two laws, on these two hang all the laws and the prophets. When you read the Ten Commandments, the first five commandments teaching you how to love your God. And the second five commandments is teaching you how to love your neighbor. Amen. He wasn't doing away with the commandments. He was just telling you, you got to keep the ten. What is the ten of the covenant? The ten commandments, Amen. people. Let's go to Deuteronomy. Because you know some people say, you know, you ain't got to keep them Ten Commandments no more. That's been done away with. That Mosaic law, you don't have to deal with that no more. Well, let's see what Moses is going to say. Let's go to Deuteronomy 4. Let's just take a peek and see what Moses is going to say. Now, somebody got to teach us the covenant that we under, people. Mm -hmm. You go to church and they don't read no Bible to you. Deuteronomy 4, and let's pick it up at verse 5. Deuteronomy 4 and verse 5, we need to know if Moses did some more teaching. 4 and 5, go ahead and read. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord, Lord my God commanded me. Wait a minute, Moses saying, I have taught you statutes and judgments. He said, even as the Lord my God commanded me. I'm teaching. Moses is doing some teaching here, people. Go ahead and read. That ye should do so in the land whither ye go to possess it. Go ahead. Keep therefore and do them. He said, keep therefore and do these laws and these statutes and judgments. Go ahead. For this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nation. But suppose you don't keep the statutes and the judgments of the Lord. Then where is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations? Amen. Now I see why the nations look at us and belch. Because we don't have no wisdom and no understanding in the sight of the nations. Go ahead and read. We shall hear all these statutes and say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. That's what they were supposed to say about us people. 
Go ahead. For what nation is there so great who has God so nigh unto them? He said, what nation is there so great that God is so close to them? Go ahead and read. As the Lord our God is in all things that we call upon him for. Go ahead. And what nation is there so great that has statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law I which I said before you this day? I thought they told me that law wasn't righteous. He said, and what nation is there so great that had statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law? But you going to tell me the law ain't righteous. Moses saying something different. Amen. Verse 8 again. Go ahead. And what nation is there so great that has statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law, which I set before you this day? Go ahead. Only take heed to thyself. He and all of us that sitting here, we need to take heed to ourselves. Amen. Go ahead and read. And keep thy soul diligently, lest for lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen, and lest they depart from thy heart all the days of thy life. But teach them thy sons and thy sons' sons. You mean to tell me these statues and judgments I supposed to be teaching to my son and my son's sons? Amen. This is what I supposed to be teaching them? And let's see how long I need to be teaching these statues and judgments to my sons and my son's sons. Go ahead and read. Especially the day that thou stoodest before the Lord thy God in Horeb. That's when he brought them out of Egypt and brought them to Mount Sinai. Mm -hmm. Horeb and Sinai is one and the same. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. When the Lord said unto me, gather me the people together. And I will make them hear my words, that they may learn to fear me all the days that they shall live upon the earth, and that they may teach their children. I got a question. Is we still living on the earth? If we still living on the earth, people, you know what we supposed to be doing? Teaching these statutes and these judgments to our sons and our sons' sons. As long as we live where? On the earth. And ain't nobody flew, flew up to heaven, have they? If we got somebody, raise your hand. <laughs> I was going to tell you, Nehemiah, get the stones, bro. <laughs> Verse 11, go ahead and read. And ye came near and stood under the mountain. And the mountain burned with fire into the midst of heaven with darkness, with darkness, clouds, and thick darkness. And the Lord spake unto you out of the midst of the fire. That's when he gave them the Ten Commandments, people. Go ahead. Ye heard the voice of the words, but saw no, but saw no similitude, only ye heard a voice. What did he say? Go ahead. And he declared unto you his covenant. You mean to tell me the Lord declared unto you his covenant. Go ahead. Which he commanded you to perform. He didn't ask you to perform them, people. He commanded you to perform them. Amen. See, asking you to perform them and commanding you to perform them is two different animals here. Amen. He ain't asking you. He commanding you. He commanded you to perform. Go ahead. Even ten commandments. Even how many commandments? Ten commandments. Even ten commandments. Go ahead. And he wrote them upon two tables of stone. Go ahead. And the Lord commanded me at that time to teach you statutes and judgment. He said, and the Lord commanded me at that time. To teach you statutes and judgments. Suppose you get a preacher stand up here. Ain't going to teach you about the statutes and judgments. Go ahead and read. That ye might do them in the land. Whether ye go over to possess it. Let's go to Romans the ninth chapter. Because you know some people be saying. You know the Lord God of Israel. Then cast Israel away. They ain't his people no more. But we need to find out who did the Lord make all this covenants with. Amen. Romans 9, and we're going to pick it up at verse 4. Let's just find out who did the Lord make all the covenants with. Because, you know, they say he didn't cast Israel away. 
You ain't got to keep them, 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 that covenant no more because he didn't cast them people away. Now he ain't dealing with Israel no more. He dealing with the church. But the church is Israel though. According to Acts the seventh chapter, the church is Israel. So let's see what he did for Israel right here. Uh, Romans 9 and 4. Go ahead and read. Who are Israelites? He say, who are Israelites? Go ahead. To whom pertained the adoption. Uh-oh, they got the adoption. Israel is the only nation right now who the Lord adopted. Because our father, forefather name was Jacob. When the Lord adopted Israel and married them, what you do when you marry somebody? They take your name on. Israel is God's name. So when we marry the Lord, when we say all oh, that the Lord have said we will do, the Lord married us, gave us his name, which is Israel. Verse 4 again. Go ahead and read. Who are Israelites? To whom pertain to the adoption? We the only nation that the Lord didn't adopt it so far. Go ahead. And the glory. Uh oh. And the glories. Go ahead. And the covenants. He made all covenants with Israel. He ain't made no covenant with nobody else. Amen. All the covenants that the Lord didn't made have been with Israel. Go ahead. And the giving of the law. They the ones that supposed to be a kingdom of what? Priests. Amen. They the ones that supposed to teach the law. And the giving of the law. Go ahead. And the service of God and the promises. Boy, they look like Israel got everything. What else can somebody else have? Go ahead and read. Whose are the fathers and of whom as concerning the flesh. Christ came. But the average person don't even know Christ was a Hebrew Israelite. Go ahead and read. Who is over all, God bless forever. Amen. Now you know, since we understand the covenant is the Ten Commandments, I wonder should we be mindful of that? Should we always be mindful of the covenant that the Lord made with our forefathers? Amen. Let's go to First Chronicles uh, 16. Let's go to 1 Chronicles 16. Let's see if we need to be mindful of the covenant that the Lord made with our forefathers. 1 Chronicles 16. 1 Chronicles 16. We're going to pick it up at verse 12. If I ever get the Chronicles. 1 Chronicles 16. And we're going to pick it up at verse 12. We need to know, should we be mindful of the covenant that the Lord made with our forefathers? Verse 12. Go ahead and read. Remember his marvelous works that he have done. He said, I want you, Israel, to remember his marvelous works which he have done. Go ahead. His wonders and the judgments of his mouth. Go ahead. Oh, ye seed of Israel, his servant. Go, we just seen he the state of servants. Go ahead. Ye children of Jacob, his chosen one. Go ahead. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. Go ahead. Be ye mindful always of his covenant. What are he telling you to do, people? He's telling you, be mindful always of what? Of the covenant that you under. He telling you to be mindful always of his covenant. Covenant. Amen. Go ahead and read. The word which he commanded to a thousand generations. He say the words that he commanded to what? A thousand generations. I want you to be mindful of. Amen. Go ahead and read. Even of the covenant which he made with Abraham and of his oath unto Isaac. And hath confirmed the same to Jacob for a law and to Israel for an everlasting covenant. You mean to tell me the covenant that the Lord make with people? Is everlasting? Amen. When do it stop? When do this stop, people? This is an everlasting covenant. Even the Ten Commandments and even to give the children of Israel the land of Canaan. Amen. That's an everlasting covenant when we go home, people. You ain't going to stay here in Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you right now. <laughs> 
I can tell you right now, the weather is great, but you won't stay in Georgia. Verse 18, go ahead and read. Saying, saying, unto thee will I give the land of Canaan, the lot of your inheritance. But he told you, I want you to always be mindful of the covenant. That's what he's telling us to do. Amen. Now, let me tell you why he's telling you to be mindful of the covenant. Maybe he mindful of it. Amen. Let's go to Psalms 111. Let's see if he mindful of the covenant. He going to tell you to be mindful of the covenant, but he not. Let's go to Psalms 111. Let's see if he mindful of the covenant. Psalms 111, and let's pick it up at verse 1. Psalms 111 and verse 1. Go ahead and read. Praise ye the Lord. I will praise the Lord with my whole heart. He said, I'm going to praise the Lord with my whole mindset. That this heart is just pumping blood now. This ain't nothing but a blood pump. When he's talking about with your whole heart, he's talking about this heart right here, people. Amen. Go ahead and read. In the assembly of the upright and in the congregation. Go ahead. The works of the Lord are great. Sought out, sought out of all them that have pleasure therein. He said, the works of the Lord are great, and they are sought out, uh, uh, sought out of all them that have pleasure therein. The ones that have pleasure therein, they the ones that are seeking this thing out. Yes, sir. Let's drop down. Let's drop down to verse uh, 5. Drop down to verse 5. Go ahead. He had given meat unto them that fear him. He said he going to give meat to them that fear him. Go ahead. He will ever be mindful of his covenant. Wait a minute. You mean to tell me the Lord turned around in First Chronicles and told me to always be mindful of the covenant? You know why? Because he said he will ever be mindful of his covenant. That's why he told you to be mindful of his covenant, because he mindful of his covenant. Amen. Like God go and be mindful of his covenant, but you gonna forget it. <laughs> but you gonna forget it. Verse five again. Go ahead. He had given meat unto them that fear him. He will ever be mindful of his covenant. Go, go ahead. That's a blessed thing to understand. Amen. When we made that covenant with the Lord and said, I do. He said, I'm going to ever be mindful of that covenant. Amen. Go ahead and read. He has showed his people the power of his works. That he may give them the heritage of the heathen. Go ahead. The works of his hands are verity and judgment. And all his commandments are sure. Oh, you mean all the commandments are sure? Mm. Go ahead. They stand fast forever and ever. You mean to tell me them commandments stand fast for how long? Oh, that's the covenant, people. Amen. He say the commandments, they stand fast forever and ever. Go ahead. And are done in truth and uprightness. Go ahead. He sent redemption unto his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. He has commanded his covenant for how long? So how we going to do away with the covenant then? How we do away with the covenant that's forever and ever? Amen. He said he have commanded his covenant forever and ever. Go ahead. Holy and reverend is his name. Whoa, you mean to tell, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. No, no, no. You mean to tell me holy and reverend is his name? <laughs> I wonder why all these men call themselves reverend then. If it's his name, you going to take the name of God and then you going to apply it to yourself. He say holy and reverend is his name. Go ahead. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. He say the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. You got to know who you, who you, who you serving. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. But suppose I'll keep the commandments. Then what about my understanding? You mean to tell me if I don't keep the commandments, I will not have a good understanding? A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. Go ahead. His praise endureth forever. He said his praise endureth forever. 
Let's go to Nehemiah, people. Let's go to Nehemiah. Let's go to Nehemiah, the first chapter. Nehemiah is read right after Chronicle. You got Ezra and Nehemiah. Nehemiah 1. Go to Chronicles and a couple of books after that is Nehemiah. Nehemiah 1, and we're going to pick it up at verse 4. Go ahead and read. And it came to pass when I heard these words that I sat down and wept and mourned certain days and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. Because the Lord had the children of Israel to go into captivity here and, and Nehemiah's mourning because the people then went into captivity. Go ahead and read. And I said, beseech thee, O Lord God of heaven. He said, I pray unto the Lord, I beseech thee, O Lord God of heaven. Go ahead. The great and terrible God. You are the great and terrible God. Go ahead. That keepeth covenant and mercy for them that love him and observe his command. Oh, man. What did he say? He say, and said, I beseech thee, O Lord God of heaven, the great and terrible God that keepeth covenants and mercy for them that love him. And observe his commandments. Hey, that's who he going to have mercy on, people. Sooner or later, that's who he going to have mercy on. The people that love him and keep in that covenant. Go ahead and read. Let thine ear now be attentive and thine eyes open that thou mayest hear the prayer of thy servant, which I pray before thee now, day and night, for the children of Israel, thy servants, and confess the sins of the children of Israel, which have sinned against thee, both I and my father's house have sinned. Go ahead. We have dealt very corruptly against thee. He said, we didn't dealt very corruptly against thee, Lord. We ain't kept the covenant. When you don't keep the covenant, you are dealing very corruptly to your God. Because you're not keeping covenant. Go ahead. And have not kept the commandments, nor the statutes, nor the judgments which thou commandest thy servant Moses. Go ahead. Remember, I beseech thee, the word that, com that thou commandest thy servant Moses, saying, if he transgress, I will scatter you abroad among the nations. Go ahead. But if you turn unto me. But if you turn unto me, go ahead. And keep my commandments. And keep that, that's the covenant. If you turn unto me. And keep my commandments, go ahead. And do them. And you do them, go ahead. Though they were cast, they were cast, they were of you cast out unto the uttermost parts of heaven, yet will I gather them from thence and will bring them into the place that I have chosen to set my name there. That's what the Lord telling us. If you keep them commandments, he say, he will gather you from thence. And will bring you into the place that I have chosen to place my name there. Sooner or later, he's taking us back home. Amen. But who's going to get in the land? The ones that's keeping the covenant. Amen. If you ain't keeping that covenant, even in Exodus, the 20th chapter. See, a lot of Israelites think when the Lord can take us back home, that we're going to go directly to the land. No. You're not going to directly to the land. You know where you're going? You're going into the wilderness, to the place of process. That's where the Lord going to process you at, and that's going to be the last time he's going to ask Israel to keep the covenant. If you don't keep the covenant then, fires you going to get is in the wilderness. I ain't got to keep that law. Shoot, that law been done away with. Then you smack your lips twice. <laughs> as far as you will get is the wilderness. Everybody who keeping them commandments in that law, they're going to go straight in the land. Amen. Let's go to Psalms 103, people. We got to do it because you got to keep this, this, this law. You got to keep that covenant. Especially if you done been baptized, you know what you done told the Lord? All that you done said, Lord, I'm going to do and I'm going to be obedient. Amen. 
That's what you're telling the Lord. Everybody who get baptized. That's what they saying. And then they under marriage. And who is their husband? The Lord God of Israel. I don't care if you a man or a woman. Psalms 103. Let's pick it up at verse 17. Let's see who the mercy of the Lord is going to be on. Verse 17, go ahead. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him. He said the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him. Go ahead. And his righteousness unto the children's children. That's why he told you to teach your children's sons and your son's sons for he can have mercy on them. Amen. And if you don't teach them, he not going to have mercy on them. Amen. Go ahead and read. To such as keep his covenant. To, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. He say the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon him that fear him to such as keep his covenant. That's who the mercy of the Lord going to be on from everlasting to everlasting to the ones that do what? Keep his covenant. You can't get away from this covenant, people. You can't get away from it. Verse 18 again. Go ahead. To such as keep his covenant. And to those that remember his commandments to do them. Uh-oh, the ones that keep his covenant, he going to have mercy on. And to such as keep his covenant, and those that remember to do his what? That's the covenant, people. That's who the Lord going to have mercy on. That's who the Lord going to have mercy on. Amen. Because Jeremiah had to holler at these people because they is breaking the covenant. Let's see what Jeremiah told the people to do. Let's go to Jeremiah, the 11th chapter. Let's go to Jeremiah, the 11th chapter. Let's see what Jeremiah told the people to do. He said, the Lord is sending Jeremiah. Go and tell these people this. Jeremiah 11, and we go pick it up at verse 1. This is what the Lord telling Jeremiah to go and tell the people. Jeremiah 11, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Jeremiah 11 and 1. Go ahead and read. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Hear ye the words of this covenant, and speak unto the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. He said, Jeremiah, I need you to hear the words of this covenant and go and speak to the house of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Go ahead and read. And say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Cursed be the man that obeyeth not the words of this covenant. Wait a minute. You mean to tell me you cursed if you don't keep the words of this covenant? He said, Cursed be the man that keepeth not the words of this covenant, he said. This is the agreement. And if you don't keep the covenant in the eyes of the Lord, you are what? Cursed. Go ahead and read. Which I commanded your fathers in the day that I brought them forth out of the land of Egypt from the iron furnace, saying, Obey my voice and do them according to all which I command you. So ye shall be my people and I will be your God. Suppose you ain't keeping the commandments. How is you his God? How is he your God and you his people? And you ain't even keeping the commandment. But uh, I'm a servant of the Lord. But you ain't got to keep that law no more. <laughs> it don't work, people. Go ahead and read. That's the only way he could be your God and you could be his people if you keeping them commandments. Go ahead and read. That I may perform the oath which I have sworn unto your fathers to give them a land flowing with milk and honey as it is this day. Go ahead. Then answered I and said, so be it, O Lord. That's what I'm going to do, O Lord. I'm going to tell these people this. Go ahead and read. Then the Lord said unto me, proclaim all these words in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem, saying, Hear ye the words of this covenant and do them. He say, then the Lord said unto me, proclaim all these words in the streets of Judah and in Jerusalem, saying, 
Hear ye the words of this covenant and do them. I need you to do them. Don't be a hearer only. I need you to be a doer of the work. Amen. This is what the Lord telling Jeremiah to go and tell the people of Jerusalem. Go ahead and read. For I earnestly protested unto your fathers in the day that I brought them, uh, brought them up out of the land of Egypt, even unto this day, rising early and protesting, saying, obey my voice. They didn't obey the voice. He's telling them, obey my voice. Keep them commandments in that covenant. Obey my voice. Go ahead. Yet they obeyed not. He said, yet they obeyed not. And look at the people in today who call themselves Christians. Do they keep the law? Do they keep the covenant? They obey not then. Go ahead and read. No incline their ear, but walk everyone in the imagination of their evil heart. Therefore, I will bring upon them all the words of this covenant. He said, I tell you what I will do. If you don't keep the words of this covenant, I'll bring on you all the words of this covenant, all them curses I'm going to bring on you because you didn't do them. Go ahead and read. Which I commanded them to do, but they did, they, they did them not. He said, I commanded them, I commanded them to do them, but they did it not. Go ahead. And the Lord said unto me, a conspiracy is found among the men of Judah and among the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Go ahead. They are turned back to the iniquities of their forefathers. He said, we didn't turn back to the iniquity of our forefathers. And look at us now, people. Look at us as a nation. And you think it's going to get any better? I don't think so. America is falling. America then turned from a producer to a consumer. That's why your shelves is starting to be bare. Because America is a consumer now. She's not a producer. She ain't producing no lot of goods. And if you don't produce goods, where the jobs at? Where the jobs at? If you ain't producing goods and you buying from abroad. America is in trouble. And she's so far in debt, she had never come out of debt. She trillions in debt. She had never come out of debt. Don't have your hopes on this America thing. You better have your hopes in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's where your hope better be in. Pay attention. Verse 10, go ahead. They are turned back to the iniquity of their forefathers, which refused to hear my words, and they went after other gods to serve them. The house of Israel and the house of Judah have broken my covenant, which I made with their fathers. You see what he say? The house of Judah and the house of Israel, they have broken my covenant that I had made with their forefathers. And the last whooping is coming up the pike, people. You know what the great tribulations is for? The whoop Israel. That's going to be our last whooping, and this is going to be the whooping of whoopings. <laughs> you know, people be talking about, boy, I wish I was living in Bible days. Boy, you just don't understand where you're living in. <laughs> you're living in the end of Bible days. And the end, end time prophecy is not a pretty picture, people. What verse you at? 11. Go ahead and read. Therefore thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will bring evil upon them which they shall not be able to escape. He said, I'm going to bring evil on this people for breaking my covenant, and they ain't going to be able to escape. Look at us as a whole. Go ahead. And though they shall cry unto me, I will not hearken unto them. He said, and though they cry unto me, Lord, have mercy. God, have mercy. He, what he say? I would not hearken unto them. Go ahead and read. Then shall the cities of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem go and cry unto the gods unto whom they offer incense, but they shall not save them at all in the time of their trouble. Ain't nobody saved us in the time of our trouble. Ain't nobody saved us. Why? 
because we have broken the everlasting covenant and the whole world is in shambles. Mm. This is why the world is so messed up. Let's go to Isaiah 24. Let's go to Isaiah the 24th chapter. Let's go to Isaiah 24. Let's sh let me show you why the world is all messed up. Isaiah 24. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Isaiah 24, we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Let me show you why the world is so messed up right now. Mm -hmm. What the people then did to mess up the world. And I'm going to tell you, maybe it's a good thing that people don't know we Israel. Because if they had found out we Israel and found out that the world is in the shape it's in because of us. Boy, you get another head beaten. 24 and 1. Go ahead and read. Behold, the Lord maketh the earth empty. He said, the Lord maketh the earth empty. Go ahead. And maketh it waste, and turneth it upside down, and scattered abroad the inhabitants thereof. Go ahead. And it shall be as with the people, so with the priests. As with the servant, so with his master. As with the maid, so with her mistress. As with the buyer, so with the seller. Go ahead. As with the lender, so with the borrower. Go ahead. As with the taker of usury, so with the giver of usury to him. Go ahead. The land shall be utterly emptied and utterly spoiled, for the Lord has spoken this word. He said the, the land shall be utterly empty and utterly spoiled, for the Lord has spoken this word. Go ahead. The earth mourneth and fadeth away. He said the earth mourneth. And the earth is fading away. Go ahead. The world languisheth and fadeth away. Why? Go ahead. The haughty people of the earth do languish. Why? Go ahead. The earth is defiled under the inhabitants thereof. He say the earth is defiled under the inhabitants thereof. Why? Because Go ahead. they have transgressed the law. He say because what? They done broke the law. This is why the earth is in the shape it's in. He say because they have broken the law. Go ahead. Change the ordinance. They done changed the ordinance. Go and, ahead. And broken the everlasting covenant. And they done broke what? This is why the earth is in the shape it's in. Because we have broken the everlasting covenant and we done got the whole earth in trouble. Because you done broke what? The everlasting covenant. Covenant, people. This is why this covenant is so important. Let's go to Hebrews, the eighth chapter, because maybe he found some fault in the people. And that's why he had to make a new covenant. Now, I must say this. As a nation, when we go back home, the Lord is going to bring us under the bond of the covenant when we get to the wilderness. But as individuals right now, you can come up under the new covenant right now. And let's see how you come up under the new covenant. We see how the old covenant was established by the blood of animals, right? If we under the new covenant, let's look at this new covenant and let's see how the new covenant went into force. Hebrews 9, Hebrews 8, I'm sorry. Hebrews, Hebrews 8, and we're going to pick it up at verse uh, 7. Hebrews 8 and 7. This is where the problem was at right here. Hebrews 8 and 7, go ahead and read. For if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. If that first covenant had been faultless, if it could have did the job, we wouldn't have had no place for the second covenant. Amen. Go ahead and read. Finding fault with them. Well, that's where the fault was at. That's why he had to make a new covenant, because he found fault with the people. They did not keep the everlasting covenant. He said, for finding fault with them, go ahead. He said, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Wait, what is the new covenant with? Who the new covenant with then, people? The house of Israel and the house of Judah. 
He didn't change the covenant and make the new covenant with the Gentiles Amen. or the Italians or the Russians, not even the Hamites. Hmm. He made the new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Go ahead and read. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt. Because they continued not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, saith the Lord. See, under the old covenant, you had frontlets. You had the, the commandments wrote all on your house, all on your mailbox to remind you to keep the covenant. And another thing he gave us was the fringes. What is the fringes for? To remind you to keep the covenant. That's all the fringe is for, is to remind you to keep the Ten Commandments. But if they're here right here, I don't need the, something down there to help me up here. I got something on my shirt to help me think. <laughs> and if I'm not thinking to keep the covenant, I'm just not thinking to keep the covenant. I don't care what I have. On, 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 on my clothes. <laughs> what verse we at? Verse 10. Verse 10. Go ahead and read. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. Go ahead. I will put my laws into their mind. Wait a minute. You mean to tell me even under the new covenant, he talking about putting them laws in your mind? That's the covenant, people. Amen. I don't care if you're looking under the old covenant or under the new covenant. The Lord been trying to put them laws in your mind. Mm -hmm. Why you think he had to make a new covenant? Because the laws was not here in your mind. Amen. So I gave you, a, I'm trying to give you every excuse. I give you the animal sacrifice. That didn't do no good. I give you the fringes. That didn't do no good. I'm doing everything I can for you people, but it's not doing any good. He say, for this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws in their mind. Go ahead. And write them in their hearts, and I will be to them a God, and they will be to me a people. So how are you going to be your God and you be his people? The only way he could do that, if that covenant, if them commandments is up here and you walking in them commandments, now he could be your God and now you could be his people.